I'm Dana Robinson. Welcome to Plumpy Thimble. Today we're taking a look at Roll for the Galaxy, which is Race for the Galaxy's little brother. Came out a little bit later, and there's a lot of arguments over which is the better game. Uh, I am personally more for Roll for the Galaxy than I am for Race. I'm not going to get into that a whole lot here. Basically, I'm just going to show you the game, tell you what I think about it. Uh, Roll for the Galaxy takes the mechanics of Race for the Galaxy in that you and a number of other players are competing both to uh, first complete your tableau, so you need to have 12 tiles out in front of you. You start each start with three tiles already, uh, and you're, you're trying to race to get 12 tiles out there. But not only just to be the first one to do that, but also to have the most victory points at the end of the game to do so. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game obviously wins. Now, the name Roll for the Galaxy obviously is insinuating that there's some sort of dice rolling mechanic. And you'd be absolutely correct in thinking so. Also, I don't drink Crown Oil, but I don't, this is about the best dice bag that I've ever seen. I, I snagged this from someone, and it's perfect. So, anyway, little tip, you can hold all the pretty dice in that bag. In Roll for the Galaxy, the dice are your workers. You put them to work in order to build your civilization. So, and, and these workers can do a number of different things. They can, they can explore, uh, which can bring you money or it can bring you technological advances or, or the ability to build technological advances or explore planets. Uh, you can develop, which is putting resources towards developing those advances. You can uh, settle, which is basically terraforming other planets for your civilization. You can produce, which is, you know, you're, I mean, you're essentially growing crops of some kind. Uh, and then in order to glean rewards from that, you can ship those. And those are all actions that you can take on your turn. You can take, so you've got your workers and you're, you're constantly building your workforce. They go into your, uh, your citizenry here and you pay them. You pay them $1 for every worker that you need. So say I've got $3, I can put three workers into my cup here. Now I roll these, but I don't want to show the other players uh, what I've got. So I've got this adorable little uh, little GM screen or a little um, yeah, a little game screen here, and I place it here. And I'm not going to do that. So I would arrange my dice behind the screen so no one else knows what I'm picking. Um, but anyway, I would take what I've got here. I can pick one to be just an absolute wild. Let it be anything that I want it to be, and have it. I, so I would place it, I don't know if you can see this, uh, but each of the phases is represented on this little strip here. So I'd take one of, my, one of my little workers and say, the shipping phase is going to happen, despite the fact that the, um, the exploring phase is, is on the face of the dice here, or on the die. I can take this and say, nope, you're not going to be an explorer, you're going to go into shipping. The other ones I arrange according to what I've rolled. And there's ways to mitigate that based on the planets and technology that you've got. Uh, you can even have one of your little guys be a dictator, which is you know, kind of cool. Once everyone's arranged their dice, they lift their screen and they say, okay, let's see what we've done. And everybody takes the, everyone takes the phase that they have selected and that will happen. Anything that isn't selected does not happen. So if everybody only picks the exploring phase or only picks the shipping phase, that happened. That, that's the only one that happened. So, if, you know, say explore and shipping were picked, only explore and shipping happened. Everything in the middle does not happen. If I had dice that were, you know, organized in the center of my little strip here, they'd go back. I can use them the next round for free. Um, that's the gist of it. That's the game. So, what makes this so fun? One is that it's simultaneous play. So there's no turns. Everybody's doing everything at the same time. The explore phase happens, you go. You get to dig in this big bag here and you know pull out tiles if you're exploring and you can use either the planet side and say, oh, I want to put that into my construction zone as a planet, or you can look at the back and see you know, the, uh, the technology side and say, oh, this is a really cool technology. I want to work on that. So you've got your construction zone here. You're constantly putting dice onto these different zones and you know, you're constructing them and as they get constructed, your workers go back into your citizenry where you can hire them again to do other projects for you. It's a really fun game where you're, you're building this, this solar system or this galaxy and you're trying to make it better and stronger than your opponents, but there's no real direct uh, interaction, um, which could be a negative thing 
I personally enjoy it. I mean, the interaction is keeping an eye on what they're building, realizing, you know, okay, they are probably going to pick the shipping this turn, which is good for me, but that, you know, leaves me open to place one of my for sure things on the settle phase, which I really want to happen. But you have to be able to reach your opponents, which is, uh, can be fun for some and can be really frustrating and difficult for others. The biggest problem I have with this game is explaining the rules to other people. It's incredibly frustrating because it's a game that I really like and I know that if people play it, they'll really like it too. Uh, as is the case with my wife, she did not want to play it. I did an awful job of explaining it. Took it to a game night. I, I pretty much froze. I sat there for, you know, 30 seconds just staring at the game. You know, I, I said it all out. I was, I was really excited about it, showed the tiles, and then it came time to explain the rules. And So there's all these different phases. I mean, it got to the point where I, I sat down, I wrote a script, and I, I made a video on how to play the game. So if you want to see a quick rules reference that goes more into depth on each of these things, uh, go ahead and check out that video. Seven minutes explains the video, explains how to play the game. It's not perfect, uh, but it's helped me as far as teaching the game. It, it's frustrating because it's not that complex of a game. It's just sort of a unique mechanism set. And so once you get over that hurdle of understanding exactly what you're supposed to do, you can play the game very quickly. Uh, it can be played with a wide variety of people. And it's just an attractive game. I mean, you've got these, these real sturdy tiles. There's uh, you know, a cool bag that comes with it, the little, uh, little screen here. I mean, obviously, though, the, the eye catcher here is the dice in the game. I mean, you get just a ton. There's a ton of different colored dice that do have, you know, different results on the faces. I mean, each of the phases, each of the faces is either going to be one of the results uh, that you get uh, one of the phases, or it's going to be a wild, and you get different points depending on the, the color of the dice based on the planet that it's going on. There's just a lot to this game that I really, really enjoy. I wish that it was one that I could get to the table more often, and it, it's... Uh, it's become a really favorite game of my wife and I's because, you know, we both know how to play this game. I can't imagine trying to teach this to to, to, to extended family or, or uh, certain groups of friends because it's just such an abstract concept to most of them. Now, I've got a lot, I, I don't know a lot of people that are quite as into gaming as I am. And so some of these concepts are a little bit more difficult to grasp. Don't let that scare you off from the, this game. It's really not that complex. You just have to get over to that initial hurdle. That being said, I do love this game. And you'll notice I, I don't give a lot of negative reviews on this channel, and I, you know, I'll try to throw out maybe a few every now and then. Uh, that being because one, I can't afford to buy bad games. I do my research and 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 will buy a game. I'm at that point now in my collection where I've got a lot, and I need to. Make sure that I'm buying games that I'm fairly certain I'll enjoy. This was one of them. And so I do recommend this game. This is uh, an absolute blast. Once you can get over that hurdle, it's it's easy to continue playing and you play it quickly. It's not a big war game that's going to take a few hours. Now, you, can, you can sit down and play two games of this in a row pretty easily. Uh, and it's a good looking game. I really like everything about this. The components, the gameplay, you know, even with its quirks. It's, and this isn't nearly as bad as, as Race for the Galaxy, the game that this is kind of based off of. All the all the cards and the, the rules sheet too, like this this little um, screen, it's got a list of all the rules, a little cheat sheet here on the back. If you can follow along with it, you can play this game pretty easily. And once you get one run through, you're pretty much good. So yeah, if you wanna know more about how to play the game, watch my other video. Um, otherwise, absolutely recommend it. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe.